What's up, everybody? Welcome to this week's episode of the Just Saying Podcast. I'm your host, Justin Martindale, and this week we are kicking off the July 4th Spectacular with none other than my friend. Uh, he has a podcast called Gas Jesus. Uh, you've seen him in Mean Girls, comedian, extraordinaire, Daniel Francesi. Yay! Spectacular, spectacular. Yes, how are you? So happy to be here. Yes, I'm excited you're here too. It's it's a, a perfect 4th of July Kickoff. You are know you, what I mean? Yeah. Are you having a good summer so far? I am. I have been pooling. Pooling. Great. Yes. I don't beach here. I like to beach in Florida. I don't beach here. Why? Bacterial? You know, bacterial infections. Mm. Yeah. Going in the water mm -hmm. is like a nightmare here. It's like mm -hmm. freezing. It know, is a whole like thing. The continental shelf moment. It's not it's, for me. There's a lot of articles that came out about like, here's the beaches to be aware of. And I'm like, I'm not going to be aware of a beach. Like, there's so many things to be or like, of. I saw one about like a bacterial thing. Yeah. And they were like, oh, this lagoon. Like, I've got to like look for the exact water dynamic. And, and one of them is Will Rogers Beach. And I love that beach. I think it's great. But I went up to the Rainbow Lifeguard House and talked to the lifeguard and was like, I've noticed that there's no one in the water. Like you would have thought like Jaws was there. Like no one was in the did water. Did you go in the water? I did last year. Yeah, it was fine. For how long? Like for a while. My tail finally went away after, you know, <laughs> yeah. a couple months. But um, he was like, yeah, well, you know, there's this lagoon, which is like toxic, not toxic, but like. I hate that word. Drainage. Lagoon, yeah. yeah it's like like a, a lagoon. And it's just sitting there. It's like and seagull shit hot tub. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. Mm. No. And he was like, yeah, at high tide, the water comes in and mixes with that, and then it rushes out back towards, yeah. And I'm like, ugh. And I go, so do you get in? And he goes, oh, yeah, I get in. It doesn't bother me, but it's like swimming your own risk. And I'm like, and you're protecting people? No. <laughs> ugh. So, I know. Pooling. Mm -hmm. No beach. No. Well, so, I, yeah, I mean, I like the beach, but when I go to Florida, yeah, mm. I like the beach in Florida. Yeah, like a Florida king. Yeah, pooling, you know, that's, I mean, I like to be outside right now. I'm mm -hmm. like enjoying this season. Yeah, I like the summer night. Mm. Mm. It's you know, my it's, favorite. The summer night. <laughs> um, what, how really? was your Pride Month? It's over. Are no, you sad? You know what? Nothing. I did one Pride event. Yeah. I'm usually doing like a million Pride events. Everybody scaled back. Bud Light scared everyone. Like nobody was doing shit. I'm like, yeah. well, let's go. Come on. Let's get pro Like You did stuff. I saw like your I did media. one thing. What was the one thing? I, I uh, At the Saquon Casino, I did like a Pride pool party. Like a launch on June 1st. Everything else was just me going out. Was it at the Luxor in Vegas? No, it was at the Saquon, the Saquon Casino. The what? Saquon. Saquon. The Saquon? Saquon. Where's that? It's just outside San Diego. It's nice. Oh, okay. They oh. have a lazy river, oh. which, by the way, is my natural habitat. Same. I am just, put me in a lazy river and I'll do anything. Just country bear jamboree. That's like, it. Honestly. Like, I just want to float. It, it's my favorite thing is just a lazy river. Like every time I went to like a water park as a kid, it was just, that was the most fun because you're just in this. And if there was a wave. I follow lazy river porn. Like it's like. What? Like I, like I follow like. <laughs> Everything just changed. No, I'm on lazy river talk. It's like people, it's like these like pool companies that build lazy rivers and mansions. Like, and I'm just like, I want that. Like, to me, that's the end game is to get my ass in a lazy river in my home. I did see one that was like in Joshua Tree or something like that where they built a, a lazy river around like the it. rental. I thought you were like talking no. about actual lazy river. No, I, to, go, to go back to lagoons, there's also like lagoon point. There's people who are like making natural pools where mm -hmm. they have fish and algae and things. No, like, no, mm -hmm. no, not for me. Nope, 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 nope. No. I'm not doing I don't fish. want like one of those fish pedicures like while I'm swimming. I'm not into it. Ugh, there's nothing that would make no me way. more disgusted. No, I'm gay. I need to have sex in my pool. Do you I know mean, what I'm saying? Is I, don't, there, I, don't, yeah. I don't need fish going Got after me. Nomi Malone over here, after my, <laughs> after my child sea monkeys. <laughs> the most awkward <laughs> pool sex scene ever. Seriously. Um, well, great. So I'm, I'm I'm so stoked. You and I have known each other forever. Yeah, a long time. Long ass I time. actually remember you saying, I think I'm going to do stand-up comedy. No, you I, don't. I remember you saying that. And I was like, really? You're going to do stand-up? You're like, yep. God. It was kind of, we were writing a sketch or something for the YouTubes. Uh, and it was something days. about superheroes. I don't remember what we were doing. We were working on something. It never yes. happened. Yeah, remember? And you were like, I think I'm going to do stand-up. I was like, I don't know. I'm scared. And now I do stand-up and I'm like chasing after you. I'm like. <laughs> chasing after me? <laughs> Back in line, bitch. Um, You're like, I'm the number one gay stand-up mm, around here. Mm. <laughs> only room for one of us. Um, well, I'm, I'm so stoked. I mean, everybody, of course, knows you from Mean Girls and sure. uh, all this all the other things you were in, War of the Worlds. Yeah. 
which I remember seeing you. Which is like, like two months of work and two seconds of like camera time. Yeah, I mean, it was wild. But that was Tom Cruise jumping on couch. Tom Cruise. I was like, so oh, you great. Got, you got nut job, Tom Cruise. Yeah, it was nuts. It was like, yeah. We mentioned last week uh, with Dave Holmes uh, about Tom Cruise and how Tom Cruise came to TRL and how he thought that he was going to be like best friends with Tom Cruise because they talked on the show and obviously it didn't happen. But then we started talking about the first rodent boy ever, Kevin Federline. Oh, yes. And which I never thought that Kevin Federline would like make an appearance in discussion on this podcast. Right. Relevant and again. Sort of. Uh, everyone was talking about like, oh my God, Kevin Federline, whatever. And then you jumped in and made a comment on the clip. So this is now like a inceptional <laughs> show where everyone's chiming in and then they come on and say their piece. But you said, uh, I was on CSI with him. I was, him. yeah. And what was that like? Well, we didn't have scenes together. I'll say that. But he did get top billing over me, which really burned my Cheerio, I got to say. I was like a little pissed about that. However, can I tell you the name of the episode? Yes, please. Fanny Smacking. What? <laughs> and I was like still in the closet too. And I was like, they have to call it that. Isn't like, Fanny like uh, British well, for like the front? So basically, <laughs> <laughs> basically. Isn't it? Isn't that a, just clam slamming? It was like the reason it was called <laughs> the reason it was called Fanny Smack. The episode was about Kevin Federline and a bunch of cronies of his uh -huh. um, put on like pig masks and then like would smack um, tourists in Vegas. And it was called because of Fanny Pack. They were calling it Fanny Smacking because tourists wear Fanny Packs, I guess. Oh. This is like really, we're reaching here. Okay. Were they hitting them in the face? Yeah, they were like robbing them. Oh. So it was like they were hitting them. So they were trying to find who this person was. So I get, I get, I guess that they, I will admit that I've never seen an episode of CSI except I haven't either. for the one that I've on and I've only seen my scenes. Yeah. But, but like, <laughs> yeah. But like in this episode, what, what I think happened. What you think happened. They captured Kevin Federline for what he did. And then my character was like some like, hey, my uncle's a bookie and he wanted me to go deliver this money. But then I lost the money because I gambled it. So I'm going to beat myself up and then pretend that I got beat up by the guy who they already caught. And they were like, wait a minute. They so were like Jesse Smollett kind of? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, that's exactly what happened. I just wow, see it. Wow. When just, life imitates art. There was some fanny smacking and I just see it all over the place. <laughs> oh, there was, there was some fanny smacking. I saw some, I saw the fanny smackers. What a weird episode. So you didn't get to, did you, no, you didn't meet him? No. So he was just, you just We were all in the, the same episode. episode. Yeah. He was the big guest star and I was the secondary guest star. Yeah. How weird. Because I was like wondering, like, what did he smell like? Was he tough? No, I, yeah, I don't know. But I did at that time find him hot because we were discussing this. You were yeah. discussing that. I'm like, our parasocial, I was yelling at my phone yeah, while you like, were discussing it. I did this it with show you. with him. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, but yeah, I would have. Yeah, I totally would have then. You would have then. But not now, no, yeah. I know. It's I know. It's always like, mm, you know, when, you're, when your idols just <laughs> <laughs> go through it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I do want to see. Now I want to watch that episode because I'm like a pig mask and I yeah I believe those pig masks involved. I'm that kinda, is like the laziest like point break uh, rip off ever. It was weird. It was a weird episode, but yeah. lots of residuals. Yeah, that's good. We'll we take love them. a residual. Yeah, we this is, will. We actually take, have a uh, oh there's some clips. It is called Fanny Smackin'. I, I don't you. like the name of this. I don't like it either. Oh, there he is. Oh, that's him with a head. Is that him? Yeah. The, with a head wrap? Oh, no, that's one of the other guys. It's him with the hat right there. Oh, that's, yeah. ooh, yeah. Oh, there's me from it. Oh, there you are. There I am. I beat myself up. Me and my cousin. I know. Look at you. Just. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that was actually Kevin Federline in. Yeah. With the I mean, that's like prime Kevin. Yeah, it was. He just, he was with Britney when he got the gig, and then it aired after he broke up with Britney. So it was like right at it. At the moment, at the at the moment, I think this was his one acting gig. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. People were like, that "Who are you on it with?" Very like, like homoerotic. I don't like it. Um, I love homoeroticism. Oh, it's the best. Mm -hmm. Um, like well, gay bait me, gay bait me all day. Oh, are you okay with that? Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't like the practice of it, but I fall for it. Let's say that they dupe you every time. Every time I get it, there I'm like, is Ugh. that. Um, actor Nicholas Galassine. I think mm -hmm. I'm saying his name right. Okay. And he was in. Um, Red, White, and Royal Blue, and he was in Mary and George on Stars with Julianne Moore. So every role he plays is like a gay role, right? But he's straight, and he's like, I really need to stop taking these gay roles so, because yeah. th people think I'm gay. And then the next 
project he got, he's playing like a gay person. <laughs> I'm like, Girl, I don't actually stop. like when the, like the straight actors are all playing gay parts. Uh -huh. I'm not into that. But I like when like straight influencers are wearing basketball shorts and no underwear. I'm all for that. Gets me every time. I know. I'm like, <gasps> uh, it's it's a it's a real problem in this country. <laughs> yeah, the, the an epidemic, if you will. The flop, <laughs> the flopping of the flops. <sighs> it's just just the word floppy. Like gets me. I, I get my a little reels. Let me see. Hold on. I want to my <laughs> no. reels. You would think that, like, I have a problem because all I'm just going to pull up my For You page or whatever the hell it's also, called. Also, a lot of them are wearing fake It's just things. sluts. Oh, wow. It's cowboy hats and <laughs> tiny shorts. It, I have no idea who any of these people are, but my Instagram's like, hey, queen. I actually don't open my For You page at all. I don't ever use those. Oh, yeah. I just let it kind of flow. Like, you know what I mean? Go with the flow. Like, but I like, don't... like a guy in gray shorts with no underwear. Yeah, you know, I'll take it. Mm -hmm. Every mm -hmm. once in a while. It's like that or like someone magnet fishing. I look at, I watch weird. Magnet stuff. fishing? I love magnet fishing videos. <laughs> Do you know about that? No. <laughs> they have like a really strong magnet that can pick up 500 pound things and people throw them over bridges and like pull up stuff that people threw off bridges that are... <gasps> Like chairs and stuff? Chairs, oh, yeah, 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 bicycles, yeah. knives, guns, like jewelry, whatever. They always try to make the jewelry seem better than it is. It like, really isn't. It, it's been thrown in the river for a reason. Yeah, there was one guy who like was in a river and he's like, I found all this. And it was definitely like some drag queen's bag that was like, <laughs> it was like some $7.99 jewel set. And he's like, I wonder if this is real. I'm like, real what? Plastic? Like, yeah. Juju B left a club and just <laughs> yeah, she just threw a like, purse in this. the river. Yeah, exactly. Get me out of here. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Great. I can't wait to use that wrench that I, I found in the river. But it's just kind of fun to find art. I mean, I like this kind of stuff. Also, there's a couple of guy, guys that go into rivers with scuba, scuba diving, like Man Plus River, kind of, and they, like, they find iPhones. Ooh. Like, they go where people inner tube and stuff, and then they find iPhones and jewelry. But if they find an iPhone and it still works, he contacts the people and gives it back to them. Mm. And it's really fun to watch. This is like honky-tonk antiquing. Yeah. Like, it's... it's, it's I, mean, I also like Antiques Roadshow. I love all... Mm. I like thrift talk. I honestly have... I get calm watching other people look show me the stuff that's in other thrift stores. <laughs> it's calming to me. I like it. I don't know. The I went to two thrift sound. stores this morning. You did? I bought this today. On I the was going to say, what is this like? I know. What is this? It's like, like Mama. I know. It's like mineral, like. <laughs> I don't know. Earth it's Kelly, baby. Yeah, I mean, it's it works. Kelly, it's Trim Spy, baby. It's a vibe. Do you even know what it is? No. You just. <laughs> you just <laughs> However, there was a tag on it that said $69. So I'll tell you what it is $69, and I got it for $4.95. Oh, so you want to know what deal. it is? A bargain. But is it look? I'm gonna. I don't mean to be like the devil's advocate. Go ahead, make fun of me. Read me. You're I'm not gonna read you. It just looks like a haunted, like Native American talisman. Like someone, no. someone was like, "Get this out Come of my on. house. Get it out. I want to make no. for like a good deal this on it." This is like rich Santa Monica mom, if anything. She's kind of like, come on, hun, let's get in the car. We got to go to soccer. She likes the sound of her own clink. Yeah. 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 Like a good. <laughs> um, well, let's get into, we go from KFED. We're going to get into the stories of this week. Now, there was, everyone's talking about the Hwak Tua girl, mm -hmm. which is just gross. It's Hawk Tua, but it's. So I'm Hawk Tua adjacent. I've heard it. Yeah. And I've seen it, but I haven't deep dived. You're going to have to educate and me. And everyone's talked about her on every podcast, everything. I was kind of like, let this unfold because everyone kind of ran with it for a while. And I was like, there's still more to this. She is the Cinderella of the summer. Mm. She went viral for making this video where she's like, Hawk Tua, spit on that thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> Jesus is alive and well in this country. See, I gotta be honest. I'm down with the Tua, but the Hawk part's disgusting. The Hawk part You're gonna is, clean your nose on there's me? There's nothing up. that disgusts me more than the sound of someone hawking a loogie. I even hate the word loogie. Listen to me. I'm with you on I've this. I've never done it. I like a Tua, like I said. A Tua is fine. A Tua is fine, but a hawk, it's like an oyster. I can't eat oysters because they look like hawks. Yes, yes. I, I, I can do a Tua. I love a good, like a good ding. Yeah. Like if there's a spittoon. Like a spittoon. Yes, exactly. Me, I can do a ding, but a no. uh, get Ooh, out of here. Get you, out of here. You gross barbarian. Yeah, like, oh, oh. I mean, I'm into like, you know, the the masculine rough energy of mm -hmm. like queer sex and stuff like that. But when guys are like, let me spit in your mouth. Or like, I'm like, no, Sick. ew. Sick. Ew. Yeah, I'd rather go swim on the beach. I'd, yeah, I'd, you rather, know what I mean? I'd rather drink a lagoon. I, would, I want to put a straw into a... 
Lagoon? A rogue lagoon. Or spittoon. Yeah, lagoon or spittoon, if we've learned yeah. anything. So she went crazy viral. Everyone was like, who is she? Like, you would have thought this was like the Princess Diaries. She I'm lost still waiting sh- for my hook to a moment, by the way. What, what, what do you mean? Just in life. Oh, like, like when's ever, when am that. I get, when, when is everyone going to go crazy over me for something dumb I said one that time? Yeah, I mean... You, Outs- I mean, outside of like work. You're going to start your pants in a thrift store and it's going to go viral. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> That's what I want. That's what I want. I'll get like the Ozempic shits and like a Salvation Army. And then and the next thing you know, I'll be signed by CIA. And then you'll be the face of Ozempic. Yeah, that's exactly oh, 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 Ozempic. <laughs> um, uh, I, what I was going to say is she went crazy viral. Everyone tried to find her. Everyone said that all these fake rumors, the UTA signing never happened. She didn't mm. get signed to UTA because let me tell you, I nutted down in my living room. I was like, there's no hope for me. Like, just <laughs> a- lost my shit. And um, so people were trying to figure out who she was. People were saying that she was a preschool teacher and she got fired from her job. That never happened. People are just lying, trying to figure who this girl out is out. So uh, leave it to country star Zach Bryan to, who has the song... Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> His two names. Zach Bryan, yes. I, I don't know. I couldn't tell you it was Zach Bryan's song. I'm sure it's something like chicken and waffles on a Sunday morning. I don't Isn't know. Isn't it funny how you're a, a country star and your name becomes Zach Bryan, but if he was musical theater, he'd be like Zach Bryan Miller. You or know, Brian like, Zach. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When people use their middle name as their last name, that's there was a kid in my school named Corey Eric. I'm like, Eric is not your last no, name. No, that's not your last name. You know what his really last mm-hmm. name was? What? Applebaum. Whose middle name? Corey Eric's real last name was Applebaum. Go with Applebaum. Applebaum's cool. It's the yeah. bomb. Yeah. Sorry. Or Corey. like Applebaum jeans. Like that would have been great. Boots with the fur. <laughs> um, so uh, this is where we're at as a nation. So Zach Bryan uh, proved on Saturday night, this past Saturday night, that bringing out the viral sensation of the moment, Hoktua. Girl, huh. Haley Welch is her name. So she made her social media uh, presence with this enthusiastic sex tip on TikTok, which has broken the internet. She has been allegedly hiding out at her rural home. Ooh. Haley Welch also sounds like a hug too. It's like Haley Welch. Yeah, it sounds like a like a an expired juice. <laughs> My Welch is a little Haley. Yeah, my Haley Welch. So she went on stage, and this is what she sounds like. She missed her moment. Mm. How do you not spit on that thing? Oh, yeah. You have to spit on the mic if you're like... Slap it up, flip it, rub it down, let's go. She's made over like $60,000 selling merch. Like... The money's out. The jobs are out there, people. Like Pete Zayas says, there's no celebrities, only worms. <laughs> that's all that's left. I mean, if if there's ever a there's time, no celebrities, only worms. There's only worms. <laughs> only worms are left. No celebrities. Patty Berry kidnap. Yeah, yeah. Kidnap. I, I honestly like. I would much rather see uh, <laughs> JoJo Siwa. I would rather see Robert Kennedy <laughs> do a hot tour in a lagoon. God. So this is where we're at, <laughs> which is kind of, she's kind of, she kind of looks like, and no shade here, she kind of looks like Eliza Schlesinger at Stagecoach. <laughs> That's shady. <laughs> I get right. I mean. If she ever, you're if not, Eliza, not you're listening, wrong. like, get on the Hawk to a spinoff. Um, so, yeah, she Hawk is. To it. Clearly making the rounds. She's making her money. Um, what do we think? Is this going to be a 15 seconds of fame? Is she going to be Look, I thought Cash Me Outside Girl was a thing, and it's still going. <sighs> Wait. Oh, yeah, she's, she's still doing it. She's still it. doing it. Bad Baby or whatever. Yeah. So, she's going to be the Hawk to a Girl. There's room for everybody. Let's uh, just say that. I know. That's the problem. Um, but, yeah, so she is now. We know who she is. Uh, we don't know if she has a job. She's probably the most popular girl in school. Mm. Um but um, I'm just a little upset because I feel like, as the original Hawk to a boy, um, <laughs> you're, pioneer, back in the you're day, pioneering a scene. I really just trailblazed. <laughs> I walked so Hawk to a girl could run. <laughs> 
Oh. Um, so this woman, she is a psychic medium. Mm -hmm. She claims that her nights out get ruined by spirits forcing her to down her drinks. And I have to say, same girl. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine the waiter come in and be like, can I interest you in some spirits? She's like, no! Yeah, I know. They're yeah. all around me! Or like, they're like, can I get you something to drink? And all the lights start flickering. She's like, not again! <laughs> Did yeah. you ever see, there's that video, they were promoting, um, I think, the Exorcist TV show. And it was like a prank video where the girl is like sitting in like a, in like a coffee shop. And there was, there was one person not in on it. Uh -huh. And then all of a sudden, she'll just like... Oh, no, it was Carrie. It was the new Carrie. She moves all the tables. She just oh, like yeah. The, yeah, I yeah, love yeah. that. That was yeah. such a good prank. That was a good prank. Yeah. And everyone's like, oh. I like a scare uh, tactic moment. Yeah, I do too. But uh, I don't think you could do that anymore because I think people, <laughs> we'll people can carry weapons now. Oh, in public. yeah, conceal and carry. <laughs> And could, could like conceal it and yeah. like and carry white like it's like not they don't go together they can't but it's <laughs> yeah but it's also like I feel like people are just so like if if people saw that and <laughs> like this woman's moving the tables and flicking the lights and all that stuff and someone would be like, like, Fuck <laughs> <up>. <laughs> like <laughs> she's like wait it's a prank you know like oh um, god like you can't do that anymore I wonder but she says. Um, this is, her name is Zara Fleming. She says that when she's out and about, the voices of the dead, I'm listening, speak and implore her to go bar hopping so she can deliver as many messages as possible from beyond the grave. So I'm going to get this girl a drink ticket. I that think sounds that, like a full-time job. Yeah. I Have you ever seen, a like, at a party or, like, at a bar, like, they have, like, someone doing tarot in the corner, like, reading fortunes? Yes. Yeah, same thing. Do you go to it? No. I do. Sometimes. You do? Oh, I'm just like, tell me. Have you? Has anyone ever told you anything worthy of anything? Yeah, I've had several, like... They're like, you are going to frost your tips. <laughs> yes, and I was like, oh. <laughs> what do you mean? This is natural. <laughs> um, she says that she keeps having to make excuses to her friends as to why they keep having to switch locations and said, you know what? It's the spirits telling me I have to go to another bar. <laughs> <laughs> she just needs an angel to be a wingman. <laughs> like, just be there and be like... <laughs> she's, uh, she's from uh, Plymouth... Uh, from Plymouth, Devon claims that instead the spirits are making her down her drink and leave so she can go and see their loved ones to pass along. Could you imagine? I kind of want to be one of the people that she approaches. I actually like that. When I see the Long Island medium, I'm just waiting for her to be like, I hear the, I'm seeing the letter M, like, and just come for me. Like, <laughs> yeah, I would love that. You know who I want? Um, What's her Tyler name? Tyler Henry? No, <laughs> Sylvia, what's her name? Sylvia Plath? Uh -huh. Was it Sylvia? No, 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 no. no. Who? Sylvia Brown, Sylvia Plath, who's that? The girl in the oven? Yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> it's like the bell jar, right? <laughs> yeah, but yeah, she put her head in the oven, wrote a book. Um, no, Sylvia Brown, that's the one that I love. And there is a, your lagoon porn is my Sylvia Brown porn because I, she, you know who she was um, at all? T tell us. She was like this woman. She sounded like she smoked like 800 cartons of cigarettes. She had krills. She was on Montel Williams. And uh -huh. she would just like sit there and someone would be like, Hi, Sylvia. Um, I recently lost my mother. And I was just wondering if you feel her presence. Your mother, <laughs> your, your mother was Cleopatra. You're a witch. And that was it. <laughs> like, like, like Queen of Melrose. She's like, the, the, yes. the money's in the yes. refrigerator across yes. the hall. If the Queen of Melrose needs a Halloween costume this year, it is Sylvia <laughs> Brown. I'm all my Listen to me right now, okay? Yes. I'm going to tell you what's going on. Your mother's currently in a lawsuit. Just a minute. Like, she would, like. Oh, there she is. Yeah. Oh, she looks, I like women like her. Instantly. I could yes. see a woman like that, and I'm like, we, we're good. She also loves the Florida beach. I like to sit next to ladies like this at the doctor's office and start a conversation. Absolutely. Yeah. like, But i that's what I would love. I'm like, so you like animal print? She, she does love get, animal then print. Then they just go off. But like, that's what I would love is she's like, someone would be like, hi, Sylvia. I'm wondering if I'm going to find love in the near future. No, you're going to die alone <laughs> because in Plymouth Rock, they thought you were a witch in your past life. Let me tell you a story. My like, father hijacked a tractor trailer full of refrigerators. Yeah. You were killed by Jack the Ripper in London. You're not. You're doomed. You're doomed. We were hearing noises upstairs and we thought the FBI was going to finally zero in on him and it turned out to be a family of squirrels fucking. <laughs> you were Natalie Wood in a past life and were thrown off a boat. I take care of all the celebrities on Melrose. I got Rihanna coming in on Tuesday. Troy Sevian bought a diamond jock strap for me. 
It's great. God. That's now I'm gonna I'm dressing the Hawk Tua girl for the Dove Awards. Oh, the Hawk Tua, the Hawk Tua girl for the Dove Awards? <laughs> Amy Grant could never. It's, she's going with Flamey Grant. Okay. Yeah. Good. The drag queen. But I also want to be at the bar where this girl comes up to me because she has to be shit faced at some point. She's like, your grandma, <laughs> your grandma says she loves oh, yeah. you. <laughs> like the, oh, just my God. hot vomit in your lap. <laughs> Do you know who says hi? Do you know who's, do you know who's saying hi to you right now? Yeah. Do who's you want to know? Yeah, who's saying hi to me? Do you want to know? Yeah. Your aunt. My grand? Your aunt. Your great, oh, my your, aunt. Your great aunt. She could be a great aunt. My, my great aunt? Yeah, she's saying hi to you right now. She's dead, but she's here. Okay, lady, can you get away from me? <laughs> One margarita, I'll tell you your fortune. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Give me two margaritas, I'm going to hook your fortune. I'm going to hook your ass. Um, so, she reminds me of that girl. That girl. Yes, she reminds me of that girl. And I know a couple of them. She looks like a great clips ad. Like, she's like, come in for a free. She looks like... Blowout. <laughs> she looks like she get kicked off Vanderpump Rules. Um, <laughs> but... There's that there I have a I know several girls in my life that are just partiers. They will party. They and every time I see them, they are just shit faced, blacked out, like don't know where they are. And then the next day, they are alive. And I'm like, how? How do you do that? And I'll, and they'll be like, Ugh, I'm never drinking again. And like, oh, I'm just taking a break from drinking. I'm only drinking like rum and gin and tequila, but I'm not going to drink like <laughs> yeah. seltzers. I'm only going to like, yeah. I'm, I'm like, what, what are you doing? I'm going to get a Bacardi and diet. Yeah, I'm like, you got into like a windowless van and vanished last night. <laughs> oh no, that was like my Uber. He was like super sweet. I'm like, <laughs> I think you were kidnapped. <laughs> How did you get here? Well, I had to Have walk through the woods. tequila and Red Bull, Christy. Yeah, I mean, yeah, look at her. Uh, I kind of want to know her. Mm, I'd rather be with the old Sylvia lady. Oh, look at here. So she says, there are times when the messages aren't so nice and that passing along the information ended up scaring the bar patrons. Yeah. Yes, oh no shit. I hate to tell you this. I hate to say this. What? By your mom. Mm -hmm. She's got a gallbladder issue. <laughs> she, <laughs> she's sick. <laughs> like, you're like, what? What? My mom did what? You're like, I'm, we're on a Tinder date. <laughs> yeah, we're on a Tinder date. Like, get out of here. So she says that her mom and dad passed away in 2019 and 2022, respectively. They also had psychic gifts and said that she first heard the call from beyond the grave two weeks after her dad died. Apparently, her dad told her to lock the door to someone trying to get into her house and claims that he also helped her avoid a car accident by telling her to break. I, you know, I hear my mom say, lock the top lock every time I close the door. Lock the top lock. I just do it. I don't know if that's so, like spirits. So... So she's driving in her car, and she's about to get in an accident, and her dead father said, break. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Dad. <laughs> yeah. Like, Wild. So uh, this next story is actually the same girl. It's really not, but... Oh, my God. I was like, really? I just love this headline. Wild moment. A woman is caught ripping open winery barrels and spraying 60,000 liters of booze on the floor, causing $2.7 million in loss. This Whoa. woman needs to be put away. As someone who is a coastal grandmother, <laughs> I love, I love, like, this hurts my feelings. I love wine. I love a good seven year block. She worked there, too. I know. Of course she worked there. She was unhinged. So this woman, uh, her name was not released. Uh, she will be the next hawk to a girl. By the valid, uh, whatever, the civil guard was arrested and taken into custody on Thursday and questioned by police before being released. So and signed by UTA. She was, yeah, signed by UTA. <laughs> the worker was on temporary one-year contract with the winemaker, SEPA 21, and it notified in the first week of February that it was not going to be renewed. So the employee masked her identity by wearing a hooded sweatshirt and entered the winery in the town of Castrillo de Duero. The early morning of February, uh, once inside, she keyed in the code for the alarm system, which she was not aware was shut off and activated it. So not only did she break into oh, this she's winery. she's a former employee. She's an angry employee. She's an angry, disgruntled okay, employee. That makes more sense. But this was, this is the, the kicker. 
they forgot to set the alarm in the winery. So she goes in Whine there about and it. turns it on and <laughs> yeah, like, thinking she's turning it off. Oh! Because she's probably drunk and mad. That's and probably wild. had her, her grandmother was <laughs> she brought turned forth the alarm to her to bar. On. Huh? That's the dumb. She turned the alarm on. Yeah. That's the best part of the story. Yeah, she turned. <laughs> She turned the alarm on so and then went to town by releasing all of the wine. Um, as the wine splashed across the floor, the woman attempted to sabotage a second tank and turned out to be empty. Oh, this is just not good for her. Um, and ran into another area of the workhouse. Um, so they notified that the woman of the decision to not extend the contract to allow her enough time to find another job. She said, no, I'm going to take matters into my own hand. And I say nay to that. Chardonnay. Chardonnay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh no. So yeah, she's been arrested. I, I, this hurts my feelings. This really hurts my feelings. It is sad. I think I'm the only person who drinks wine here at the comedy store. There, I said it. I will go up to you the bartenders be. and they'll be like, "What can I get you?" And I'll say, "Sauvignon Blanc." They're like Chateau 1946. Like. Well, they put it in like the goblets because they they'll put it in the little wine glasses, and I'm like. Uh, do, you, do, do you ever get those ones that come with the plastic on top? Like it comes in a goblet. It's like a one. It was like a Shark Tank thing. Like the plastic. I thought they were gonna take take the plastic off. film. Yeah. It's like so a, you can't get roofied. No. It, it, that's how they come. You just buy it like that, and you're like. Tss. Oh yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Like they were like weird, like popsicle bottles. They right. looked like that. Yeah. Oh, did they they didn't take off, did they? No, yeah. No, really. no 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 no. I like a good, cold, crisp white wine. That's my jam. Mm, okay. And it always makes me laugh when I get it when I order a wine here and. People are like, what? I'm like, well, what do you want me to have? A shot of tequila? No. I like to sit and sip. <laughs> I think it's odd for you because you're so fun and anima animated and like, you know, wine makes people be like, mm, lethargic. Oh, I love wine. I, I love a good wine. I right. love, <laughs> I love, right. I love a vineyard. I love a Whatever wine. Whatever works for you, all. I know. I would yeah. love to go just like wine tasting. Um, let's see. Emma Roberts. Uh Women hit harder with Nepo baby label. No one calls out George Clooney. Well, they really don't. Well, you so, just did. I know. Emma Roberts is weighing in on the Nepo baby debate, saying women face the criticism more than men do and pointing to one of Hollywood's biggest stars to make her point. The actress sat down for a conversation about her famous family on the podcast Table for Two, released on Tuesday, and she thinks that the controversy is unfair, especially for women with A-list family trees. Um, Roberts has said that her dad, Eric Roberts, is an actor, and her aunt is obviously Julia Roberts. She says that she feels young ladies get attacked more than young men for their Nepo baby status. Just take George Clooney. So she says that Emma was always a joke. Why is no one calling out George Clooney for being a Nepo baby? His aunt, Rosemary Clooney, was an icon. Yep, even one of Hollywood's best and brightest fell off the Nepo baby tree. George's aunt was a singer and actress who appeared alongside Bing Crosby in White Christmas. She and George even acted in an episode of ER together back in the day, as well as CSI with Kevin Federline. And Emma's not throwing shade at George. She's saying that she doesn't think anyone should catch flack for chasing their dreams. I kind of am going to say I'm on Team Emma's side for this. I ain't on her team I'm oh, sorry. I, I think that sounded personal. <laughs> well, I've just heard her say a bunch of stuff about a bunch of people. Mm. Like, there's a lot of press about her saying stuff about. It. I'm just like, shut up. Like what? I don't know. Like she, well, she, she just said transphobic stuff to that actress during um, American Horror Story. I can't remember her name. The one who passed away in Pose. That was it was like a big. Angelica Ross. Wow. And she she was like, uh, it's, it's the a PA came over and was like, hey ladies, and she was like, don't you mean lady? <gasps> Yeah. On American Horror Story with Kim yes. Kardashian? How dare you on a Ryan Murphy set? Oh my God. I know. And actually, Angelica Russ said she was quitting acting because of her experience working with her. And was she better not? And was going to focus on political aspirations. Okay. We need that. Yeah. But what I was like, damn. That's ooh. It sounds brutal. It sounds the only thing I heard, but whatever. What else? I don't I don't have anything to dish because I wasn't there, but I, I've just heard a lot. Like what? I, <laughs> I don't know. Just people who have uh, been, you know, been on set. I've uh -huh. just been like, like the worst person alive. I don't know where I can't say it. I actually enjoy her acting, so maybe she could prove me otherwise. Okay. But I don't know. I don't. She doesn't have to prove me shit. But I do. I mean, think about it this way: you have people like um, Dakota Johnson. You have uh, Maya Hawk. Tua. Um, 
<laughs> like, who, who are these? Like, there's so many. I feel like that is a thing primarily with women. And I feel like guys like Patrick Schwarzenegger and I guess even a George Clooney, even though he's like, you know, been around for a while, but also like Jaden Smith. The cast of girls. Yeah. yeah like, <laughs> yeah. It's all, it's all just like, oh, it's a these lot. women. I, actually, I don't mind nep nepotism. Mm -hmm. I like my nieces, they're like 11, but if they want to be actresses when they're 18, I will cut every corner for them. I suffered the slings and arrows or whatever. I don't need it. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Like, I think that all, I don't think Hollywood is a place for kids. No, all. no. And if you are a kid and you're in Hollywood, then your parents should pass like a law lawyer bar level exam of something that that makes it you are worthy of being able to monitor your kids. Look at that quiet on set bullshit and everything. I mean, oh. I've worked with every child star: mm -hmm. Brad Renfro, Lindsay Lohan, uh, Lacey Chabert. You know, um, Rachel Lee Cook. I could go on and on and on with all the people I worked with that were child stars. It's very rare you end up with like or like a Lacey Chabert who comes out like totally like normal, a sweet, normal, nice person. Yeah, you know? like a lot of people have been through a lot of stuff in and 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 now it's being uncovered even more, like the horrors. I. If my nieces were to do it now, the only way I would do it is if I took a year off or whatever and was on set with them while they shot a season or something or whatever. Like, Because to me, it's like, I would know what's going on there. I'd be like, no, 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 that's not how it goes. Doesn't she get this kind of break or whatever because I'm in the union. Whereas like, I feel like, so I don't really have a problem with nepotism because I feel like, yeah, they know what's going on. They can guide them. They have somebody in the industry to help them out. Yes. Like, why not? Yeah. And often a lot of those talents and stuff are hereditary. Like, you know, there was a lot, you know, a, like a gifted athlete might have a gifted athletic child, like, or well, whatever. So LeBron James's son just got signed to the Lakers. Precisely. Yeah. After like, and it, you know, he's like 19 years old and signed with the Lakers. He also had like a heart attack last year. I have no And they're like, put that. him on the Lakers. It's yeah, like, he's no playing with his dad now. By the way, like, George Clooney is handsome, talented, wonderful. It's, you're, you're not giving me any examples. Of, now, if we're talking about Northwest and Lion King. God. Good God, get a grip, girl. Like, you know, I, the story that, of— That made—watching that made me want to go into the Hollywood Bowl winery and unplug all the tanks. Not the bowl. <laughs> not the bowl. Was the it bowl's like bowl? our— Yeah, but the bowl's like our Carnegie Hall almost. Like, why are you, like, putting a stain on such an institution, I thought, for oh, money? Oh, you're talking about Northwest. I thought you were talking about me. <laughs> no, yeah. Just like, Martin Martindale should never play the bowl. <laughs> like, oh, my God. No, no yeah. and by the bowl, I mean that toilet bowl of a lagoon in Malibu. <laughs> yeah, well, you know why she did that, right? Why? Because it was the 30th anniversary of The Lion King. Mm -hmm. uh, they need content to film for the Kardashians Great. who are on Hulu. Why change the outfit? Huh? Why change the outfit? Why not make her look like Simba? Why make her because, look no, like Big What Bird? North wants, North gets. Okay? But Hulu is also owned by Disney. So it was a complete... I don't know. I fell into like a TikTok rabbit hole with all that stuff about how the casting people that were there were saying that there were like four kids who had auditioned yeah. over a series of like five weeks. Yeah. And then like they came in with like a million dollars and were like, she doesn't rehearse. She, she's not wearing that. She's wearing this. Like, I'm sorry. Like, have a little bit of respect for the theater. I mean, but what? They can't spell it. Would <laughs> any of us be talking about it if she wasn't in it? That's my thing. I, you know what? Well, I... Maybe if she was great... No. Like, I'm, there might be this Zippo kid out there that's good. I don't know. It doesn't matter. I was excited to go see it. So you might be talking to the wrong cat. But like, I, but I tell you, like, I was, I was just a, f it's not, okay. I did a production of Cinderella in second grade, no, second, seventh grade. Okay. And we forgot our lines and everything got like messed up and we did all this kind of stuff. But it was for elementary school kids that came to come see us and they were laughing at everything. And when we got back, my teacher was like, that was a disaster. And we were like, what? And she was like, you guys forgot your lines. I'm like, but everybody laughed. She's like, it doesn't matter if they're laughing. You can be throwing pies at each other with no context and that doesn't make it good. And that's how I felt about that. It was like a pie throwing contest mm -hmm. and it was like not respecting the sanctity of the art form, period. Mm -hmm. Like, I have no problem with giving someone a break. Even if she tried hard, if she was in the costume and she gave it her all, I'd be all done. Like, everyone, I, 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 everyone is, like, uh, dissing it because it wasn't even an attempting to be good. Yeah. Wait, are we still talking about Northwest or yeah. Georgia Siwa? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I actually was about to talk about Georgia Siwa, but I pivoted back. Because, uh -huh. because I don't have a problem with Georgia Siwa. Okay. Okay, do you want to you debate this? Yeah. Go. Okay. Georgia Siwa right Georgia? now. Georgia? Who's Georgia? 
Who's I don't know Georgia Jojo, Siwa. Jojo Siwa. I don't know Georgia Siwa. <laughs> Jojo Siwa, okay, mm-hmm. is a queer person right now who is getting right that now. kind of attention where everyone's talking about it. Or right now in the zeitgeist, right? Yeah. And I think she's going through the Hollywood machine, mm-hmm. okay? And because it's already a machine, we've mm-hmm. established that it's machine. Britney went through the Madonna machine, so and so and so on forth, right? And Madonna attempted to go through the Marilyn Monroe machine, whatever, right? It's all like a machine. So they're putting her through the Miley Cyrus the machine. They're like, you're 21, right? Go out there and stick your tongue out, do your salvia, like, you know, be wild, be 21. Because we realize the repercussions of a young person in the industry who doesn't get to be their age. Uh Go be as crazy as you want. Drink vodka on stage. Go perform at every club. Make noise. And in about a year, we'll put you in a tuxedo and we'll throw you at the Golden Globes and you're going to be a star. Like, let her make all the noise now, because who out there that is a young lesbian is making that much noise right now? Me. (laughs) Well, the haircut doesn't make you a lesbian. As someone who is a young lesbian. You may look like Susan Powder, but. I get it. (laughs) She's not even a lesbian. I know. No, no, but truly, like, I'm actually like, go ahead. Like, go be, go be. I was at uh, Beaches WeHo the Mm -hmm. other day for, like, bingo night, and then. Oh, that, that's a weird bingo night because it's like bingo night and then poof, it's a club. Like you're like, whoa, I'm in like a night life. You know what I mean? It just changes from bingo to like a oh, nightclub. Oh, okay. So as it was like changing over to nightclub, JoJo Siwa shows up. Oh, God. And she goes you in there. You saw it in the wild? I saw it in the wild. <gasps> and I couldn't believe it when I saw it. Like, and I look, you wanted a picture. Like I was like, that would be like, that would be great for the gram. But I didn't, you know? And she goes and they brought her up to like this, the private section upstairs. And then they were like, JoJo Siwa, like on the DJ, on the mic. And then they were like, come on, Bitch. Oh, and she did the whole dance up there for everyone, and everyone's filming it. And I'm like, get it. Like, why not just get it? Like, soak that up. They could clean that up so fast. It's just to like wash the silly makeup off your face, put on this like Janelle Monet tuxedo. Something. Sing, I just think sing it's a, so corny. Sing, sing a slow ballad and, and rock or us all in like sing a year a song. or two. She's a baby gay. Like, let her. She's a baby gay making noise and people are talking about her. She's being like a night, uh, a, a late night punchline. We're talking about her right now. I know. Awesome. Th- to me, that's pride. Go be crazy. Go be drunk. Go be stupid. Wear glitter. Be gay. That's fine. And have your fun, girl. Mark my words. And like, the, well, I said it here first on on on, on just saying with Justin yeah. Martindale. Yeah. That JoJo Siwa will clean up her act and be somebody that will be like renowned at award season with like an actually probably a, a killer album. Because honestly, other people are writing these songs. Like, okay. Let's be honest. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's like they're going to give her better stuff. They're just letting her. They're giving her a foolproof pop song that anyone could sing. Yeah. You know, which is like you know the treatment many pop stars have gotten. It's like adult kids pop. Yes. Okay. Okay. So I said my piece. I because I think that you know, um, in a way, it's a little gay bashing to just go out. I know she's cringe, but like it's like cringe on purpose. Perhaps is like a lot of press. Cringe on purpose is a lot of press, and 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 there's talent there. She's a great dancer. She's a great dancer. And, and honestly, when she acts butch and she's like showing her butch side, I'm kind of like I could see like some of my lesbian friends really going for her. Ew! Oh, that's gaslighting. Is that- <laughs> no. 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 I don't know. And she's like, yo. Uh, oh, stop it! It's uh, like fuckboyish a little bit. Oh god! You don't think so? No, I'd rather. There go to- are men equivalent of JoJo Siwa's that you've got a boner uh, for. I guarantee. Yeah, you're gonna have a magnet one day and pull her out of a lake. Like honestly, <laughs> by her glitter face, <laughs> by her ponytail. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's get, speaking of JoJo Siwa, men's fashion trends <laughs> for 2024, which I thought was really kind of fun. Be, like, there's a lot of mesh. Short shorts, mesh. I am wearing a lot of mesh right now. There's a lot, I like there's it. There's so much mesh. Well, I, you know what? I would have worn mesh years, but there was never uh, mesh options. Yes. Just because, like, Cerulean has made it down to the people. Like, we're, we're entitled now to wear mesh. Yes. I hope mesh is here to stay. I enjoy it. I don't enjoy sweating. I don't I want to be cool. You know what I mean? I'm sick of wearing these wife pleasers. I get it. I totally get it. And this is something that um, I wanted to talk about because as someone who goes shopping, I don't like, I'm not a big online shopper. I like mm. touching it. I like being, you know, sure. touching, you know, seeing the colors, everything, make sure it fits, like, right, whatever. Um, well, you know, you can return Shein now at Forever 21. Wait, what now? Yes. Wait, what? Say it again? You could return Shein clothes at Forever 21. Really? Mm-hmm. Kind of like how you could return Amazon at Whole Foods. Oh, like Whole Foods. Right. Oh, well, that makes sense. Well, I went into the stores recently, and everything is mesh. Mm. And it's also that weird, like, sweater material. Yeah, I don't 
Yeah, I, I do like it. Sweater mesh, sweater like cut off uh, sleeves. Good for you. <laughs> Good for you. I think, you know what? It's great mesh. It's everywhere. It's that weird, what is it saying here? The, the designers like Botter, Amiri, and Etro. The style has an inherently bohemian feel to it, but can take on a grungier identity. With you know, mesh is an epidemic in the gay community. <laughs> Yes. A lot of mesh heads out there. Well, I feel like, yes, a lot of mesh heads, a lot of uh, broccoli cuts, a lot of like, <laughs> you know what I'm over? I'm over the pearl necklace. Yeah, sure. I'm over it. Like people are like a, wearing bathing break. suits and a pearl necklace. All of these mesh things look good to me though. I'm sorry, I'm in it. I like the, f I like this one, this green one, the slim mesh singlet tank top. Okay. But it's, it's when it looks like your, your Nana crocheted it. I'm kind of like, and I'm out. Zara, I'm talking to you. Um, so, yeah, I mean, a lot of mesh. Oh, God, I wish I had the confidence <laughs> to wear a unitard and thigh-high boots. <laughs> you want to wear that? No. Yeah. But I wish if there was an alternate oh, multiverse he wear that either. He's getting a paycheck. I know. That's what I'm saying. But, like, I have seen that out in public. I have seen, like... I, I, you know, the baggy, oh, baggy pants coming yeah. back. Well, so, okay. I never got to wear Jenko jeans because yeah. I was already past the waist size. Mm -hmm. Like when Jenko jeans came out that Jenko jeans made. But now that Jenko jeans are coming back, I will own a pair. Yeah. I'm, they still don't make my waist size. They don't, wait, what? <laughs> make my waist size, but I'm going to get a pair made. Yeah. I want like a, I've always wanted like a big pair of raver pants and I'm going to get one. I see. I kind of, I love the oversized. I, oh God, what? I'm going to have to get these. <laughs> I'm like, black Ben's We're like shopping pants. Like, oh, I'm like, oh, mm, fabulous. Mm, I could definitely I rock I do those. like a snakeskin leather. I do. I do love that. I, and I've also noticed in the straight community too, that the shorts are getting shorter and I'm not mad at that either. No, I do like that too because it's hot. I hate when they like torture us with fashion. We have to wear like certain things. Like I'm like, can't we just like be comfortable and like nobody give a shit? Like, yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. So, yeah, it's like this definitely like kind of like Cape Cod look. Mm. Um, Old money. The, yeah, we're going, the, the inches on the shorts are getting shorter. We're getting five sh five inch waist, or I'm sorry, five inch uh, shorts. We're getting court shorts. Inseam. Um, what was that? Five inch inseam. Five inch inseam. Yes, thank you. Um, and then um, kind of like it's weird like Cape Cod nautical feel to right everything. i feel it i'm the also country like, club i i'm so i'm over the pearl necklaces and i'm over there goes your social life i know <laughs> did they photoshop his knees probably it looks like it it looks like his knees got a little help i'm kind of over the the pulled up sock look too you know that's something that people are talking about that if you have sh like no show socks that you're that you're old it's like the new old head thing mm -hmm. you know i know so they say, watch, look around the room, and nobody under 30 will have no-show socks. And I started looking around the room, and it's true. That everyone over 30 has no-show socks? Yeah. And I, I was like, like a no-show sock. We were tortured for wearing long socks when we were little. They made fun of us. And now it's like you're, they're making fun of us because we're wearing them. It's, this society is just brutal. It's brutal. Mm. What's next? I don't know. <laughs> Um, you know what I can't get into? Like, I'm uh, talking about summer gear. Like, and I know it's for some people. And one of my best friends, David the Gay, is going, it, it, it is for him. Mm -hmm. uh, is like wearing like um, uh, caftans. I've never been able to do it. I've never been able to wear a muumuu or a caftan. I feel like Homer Simpson when he wears the muumuu. Why? I, I can't do it. I don't, like, or, you know, those, or, you know, the worst. The worst thing is the long pajama shirt that goes, it's like a nightgown for men. It is just not me. I hate the feeling of wearing that. Oh, I love it. Really? Oh, yeah. You wear like, like a caftan or like a long... Well, uh, I'm in a flowy shirt. I'm in a flowy... But I'm talking like a shirt that goes to your knees. Oh, no. But I did get a like kind of a... Like an Ebenezer Scrooge. Like, who goes? <laughs> and we've got like a candle. And, like, Don't a tell the night. drunk lady. She'll be like, <laughs> spirits, tell me to drink again. I'm visited by three spirits. I, Jack, I'm... Jim, and... <laughs> Bartles and James. I don't know what the third That's one is. Four of them. Um, they are a pair. Of the I, I I do love a comfortable like billowy moment. You were so you were a, you're a caftan gal girl. When I go to Pop Springs. Yeah, even then. Yeah, I'd rather just be naked. Say no. Mm. I get weird with public nudity. Well, I'm not saying I'm in public. I'm in Palm Springs. Palm Springs to me is private. Yeah, like, I don't like to. If I go to out in Palm Springs, I'm going. Maybe a drag show, mm -hmm. maybe a dinner. Well, I'm not gonna wear it like maybe out. a brunch, yeah. but the rest of it's like at the house I rented with yes, my friends. If I'm at the house, I'm not gonna like wear it out and like 
public, but like, mm. yeah, like by a pool, I'll do a, a, a half ten moment. No, I don't even want to cover it. None of that. It's out there. Just look it up. I don't even wear robes. Um, let's see. Well, so the, we got the men's fashion. Next, we're going to go into Jonathan Van Ness. Jonathan Van Ness is finally breaking their silence on these uh, abusive workplace allegations. Remember this? Do you mm. remember this story? Yeah, I do. So, um, let's see. Three months after Rolling Stone uh, made their expose, alleged a myriad of tensions on the set of Queer Eye, including that Jonathan has rage issues and can be emotionally abusive on set. Um, Jonathan has since then broken their silence. He says, our whole Queer Eye family had, like, first learned... <laughs> this is the quote. Our whole Queer Eye family had first, like, learned about this article in, like, December, Jonathan revealed. <laughs> That's a pretty good impression, actually. <laughs> There's something he's going to write an investigative takedown about you that isn't really based in reality. I think you found your your uh, Snatch Game character. <laughs> My Snatch Game is Jonathan yeah. Van Ness. But it can certainly have a lot of things taken out of context to make you look as bad as possible. So that could drop any day now, just so you know, Mama. Uh, the hairstylist recounted feeling like they were walking on eggshells in the time between learning of the article and it's Murphy has day. worms. <laughs> God, I think a lot of people were like looking for a reason to hate me or like looking for a reason to be like, see, I always knew that they were a fake cunt, <laughs> and this is proof. <laughs> My family was so supportive of my husband and my team, but I didn't even get on social media. Like, look at my phone for three weeks. Have you had any interactions with her? Have you had any interactions with her? What? Have you had any interactions with uh, JVN? I went on a date with Jonathan Van Ness. <laughs> like, you heard it here first. Years and years and years ago when Jonathan had a salon on Sunset. or it was doing the Gay of Thrones Stuff for funnier Before died. Gay of Thrones. Okay. Before Gay of Thrones. I don't even remember where we met. I just remember we met up for coffee and <laughs> I was sitting there and very nice. He only punched me twice. Um, <laughs> apparently there were rage issues that I <laughs> totally overlooked. Um, but uh, I just remember sitting there and being like, mm, this is a little much for me. Mm. Just because it was like, ah! And I was like, mm, You're okay. like, that's what I do. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But very nice. And this, I feel like that was before. If you guys dated, it would sound like it just a, like a. It was like one day. Like a bunch of pigeons. Like. Yeah. yeah. Well, I sat there and I was like, mm. 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 Oh, yeah. And that was it. There was no like second date, anything like kiss? that. No. Oh. No. Okay. Maybe. Oh, God, am I going to, like, wake up in the middle of the night and be like... <laughs> <laughs> Did your knees touch? Uh, no, no, no. We were, I'm trying to remember where I've we I've met were. him a few times. I thought he was pleasant yeah. when I met him and very sweet, so I don't know. But I do think that, like, some of the, those other queer guys, they, they seem like they got their shit together. You know what I mean? Like, I like who? Like, I don't know. Like, the Kram one that quit? <laughs> no, like, kramo has got that show where it's like, uh -huh. you know, he's trying to help people understand their feelings. Mm. So it seems like someone that would maybe try to be that way. Yeah. You know? I don't know. I think it's fine, but I'm like, also, I'm the thing I have a problem with is rather than making up excuses and telling people to look at your phone from like three weeks ago, just be like, yeah, this came out and you know what? It's all wrong. And if I did have this moment with a, a person, I apologize and I'm sorry. Rather than being like, it's not true. Look at my phone. <laughs> I would never say that. No. Uh, look over here, you know? Yeah, you know. None of my shows have made it to like a third season. Mm -hmm. But I feel like I would maybe start to be a diva around season three about some things about, you know, <laughs> like, do you know what I'm saying? Fair. Like, it just seems like after a while you're working with the same people and it's just not getting fixed. Like, what, yeah. let's go. But what does Jonathan fix? I, I, no, I'm, I'm saying like if like stuff on set that's wrong oh, gotta, gotta, or gotta, whatever, gotta. you know? But Jonathan's like the hair person, right? I like, was on this one movie, okay? And yeah. I really enjoyed the movie. I, I'm not going to say what movie, but I love the director. I love the cast. I love the role, everything. But it was death by sound guy. This sound guy was killing me. He wanted, I don't know what the deal is that it, with the sound in this movie, but he wanted like to clip a sound on me. He wanted mics under me. He wanted the boom above me oh. for all of my scenes. And it was like, I would like come up and it would be like, I'd be like, oh my God, he just ruined my scene. Like he'd be hitting me with the boom. Like, or like he'd be like, you know, sorry, we're having a sound issue. Like in the middle of like me crying and something. Mm -hmm. It was so annoying. So, I mean. Sounds like gay baiting. 
I, maybe it, I, when I feel something hard hit me yep. in the face, I uh, he's like, "Sorry, man, I got this big boom. I just there can't. better be a hawk to a nearby." Oh yeah, seriously. Well, I don't know, but I, I mean, I don't know. Sometimes I have um, problems with you know set issues. <laughs> You're just like I have problems with rage, <laughs> rage issues. Jesus. Well, speaking of, do you want to push the mic back down? Oh, sorry, uh, my yeah. God. <laughs> Sound uh, <laughs> The sound guys are, they're going to form a union one day. Uh, your old co star, Lindsay Lohan, is back for Freaky Friday 2. Yes. Um, and here is a look of former Hollywood bad girls then and now. Oh, look at, mm. look, oh, little Jonathan Bennett. I haven't seen yeah. Jonathan Bennett in forever. Yes, he's a good guy. Let's see. Okay. So okay. we have, you know what? And I'm here, we've talked about this so many times. This new Lindsay Lohan, killing it. Yeah. Killing it. Lovely. She looks great. Yes, I'm She's very happy for her. back, you know, and, you know. You, you know, I felt like kind of like like big brother daddy to all those, like, young girls back then. Because, mm -hmm. like, you know, I was in my 20s and they were all, like, like young tweens and teens. Mm -hmm. And I have a little sister that was around their age. And I felt for them. I was like, you know, I was always trying to give, like, some sage advice or, you know. But I watched a lot of them go through their troubles. The craziest thing about Lindsay is I remember somebody crashing into her car in order— a photographer, in order to get the first pictures of the accident. Because the money that he would get for the pictures of the accident way outweighed the insurance of just giving a fender bender. So he crashed into Lindsay's On car purpose to get the picture to get the of first her. Fo right. That's, yeah. th th who can survive that? I'll tell you who. The woman who broke into the wine cellar <laughs> <laughs> and turned on the alarm when That's it was when, already off. Th for forget a dick. I'm going to huck to on that guy. Yeah. I mean, that, me. I mean, yeah. I feel like there was a lot of that kind of behavior set up with her. It was and also like, the creation of TMZ. They were shooting yes. up, up skirts and yeah. Doing very weird things at that era. It was very, very yeah. problematic. And like, you know, every I just remember being like at one point being addicted to Perez Hilton. Right. I just remember like getting up and being like, oh my God. Like trying what to happened? what happened? Because what happened? Social media. Yeah. And then I was like, who gives a shit about this? Mm. Um, but yeah, so she is, you know, in her Lohanaissance, mm -hmm. and I'm Totally here for it. I love it. I am it. too. I always knew that she would get like, Hollywood loves to come back. Yeah. And I was like, you know, they'll just make like a desperate housewives and she'll be like the Terry Hatcher and she'll get like all you know what I mean? Like ah! it, would, it would be like so cool. That like, would be you know? great. But she got it even before that. Like she 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 dipped out of town, which is a very smart move. You know, put herself together, like and then she said came bye back. and moved yeah. to Dubai. Yeah. Yep. I even but it was I always had a little bit of empathy for Lindsay because I remember, like, at her peak sobriety moment when she was on Oprah yeah. and doing all that stuff. We went out to this event, and um, they handed her 32 drink tickets. She looked 32? at 32? I counted them. She They gave them to her, and they go, here you go, here you go. And she looked at me, and she's like, what am I supposed to do with this? And then she, like, gave it to me, and I was just like, <laughs> I... You're famously in sobriety, and they're giving you all the drink tickets you could ever need. For like, did they know that Lindsay Lohan was a medium who I talks to spirits, <laughs> and she had to have drink tickets to? No, but like, how do you do? You know what I mean? That is weird. And then she was moving into her apartment, and they found out it was her, and then raised the price of the apartment. Like, uh, it just there was always shit, you know, that was hard on you know. It, it was definitely a frozen snake. She asked for it. She was showing up to all this the right events and doing all the things. Like, I saw it happening. I knew where it was going. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But. I'm glad that she made it out somehow. Not everyone does. Well, and here's her, I guess, famous frenemy. I don't know if they're friends anymore or if they really even were, Paris Hilton. The um, real Regina George. She, ooh, yeah. I think so. I mean, I do think, you know, because there was the whole, like, fire crotch incident where she was, like, on TMZ, and I was like, what a thing to say to someone. Like, who gives a shit? Mm -mm. Also, like, maybe your fire crotches aren't bad. I don't know. She didn't say it, but she was like laughing really hard. With what's his name, Brandon, whatever, yeah, whatever his name yeah. was. Uh, uh, just that like the whole privilege thing just always grosses me out. Yeah. So Paris know? Hilton's like now having a comeback, making new mm -hmm. music. I love Carter. I love, her husband is a really nice guy. And um, I've known that's him. her husband. Yeah. Jesus. God. Yeah, he's a really nice guy. He had I don't know if he still does, but he had a vodka company and sponsored one of my art shows. He was a cool guy. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um. Nicole Richie. Love. Liv. I mean. Like, I mean, talk about making it out and becoming like a really cool, chill person. She's really, really funny. I laughed yeah. so hard at that. Like Her show the, is great. The gemstones where they're like, <laughs> she made this song about like all the birthstones right, right, right. or whatever. Yeah, I think out. she's really funny and really sweet. The both of them, um, any t her and her husband, anytime I've ever seen them, they've always been so gracious and kind and mm -hmm. say hello. You know, it's so easy to pretend like you don't know somebody. Yeah. You know what I mean? But over the years, we've run into each other and been places and they've always been so kind and nice and... 
Are we? Are they doing the Simple Life reboot? I don't There's like know, talks would, that they're doing. It's a, funny. I would watch it. Anyway. Absolutely. It's funny. I like. I like her. Uh, and Brittany. Yeah, Brittany. Oh, Brittany. God. Yeah, I'm a little concerned, but I'm also at the same time happy for her that she's getting to like do whatever the freak. Show. Let your titties out at the beach, girl. Do whatever you got to do. I'm in that moment too, or I have those moments where I look in the mirror and I'm like, oh God, am I QAnon? Because I feel like <laughs> queer. I feel like there's like all these talks about like AI and stuff. And I'm like, is that really her? Or is she like in, right. a, in like a padded cell somewhere? And then something <laughs> like someone did a thing. Like it was over the weekend. Someone posted a video of like the things she likes and the things she doesn't like. And she would be like, in an old video, she'd say something like, oh, um, or no, the recent, the newer video, she'd be like, my favorite food is a, a good steak and a big potato. And then like in the old video, she's like, I can't even eat steak because just the taste of it would make me like sick to my stomach. And I'm like, <laughs> like all of it yeah. yeah I don't know what to I, believe anymore I know I you know just I, I feel like the stuff that they tell the like what are you going to believe of that anyway you know, I know it's, it's all just like your 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 storyline or whatever you I know? just want Britney Spears to just get it together goof us all and just like kick open a door like fog she should make another movie she billows should crossroads out too she won't make Crossroads too. She can't even make a Crossroads herself. <laughs> She's, I mean, I would love for her to like make music. The, talk about the Hollywood machine, right? So Britney yeah. Spears was like the famous virgin. You know, she was like, I'm going to wait until I'm married, da, da, da. And then they literally had to make a movie to have her lose her virginity mm -hmm. at the height of her fame. They had mm -hmm. to be like, we're going to write a song and a movie about this. And it doesn't matter if the movie's even good or not. We're just going to get through this movie so America could digest the fact that you're now able to receive penises. And I think that that's like <laughs> such a weird thing. She's able to receive penises. <laughs> yeah. I also, by the way, Crossroads has one of the best scenes in any movie ever. I don't know if I remember any of it, but go ahead. There's the scene where Lucy, played by Britney Spears, mm -hmm. goes to... The whole movie is about, I want to meet my real mom, right? Oh, okay. So she's like, I'm going to go find my mom. And she goes, and she rings the doorbell. She waits there. She has her little bucket hat on. <laughs> and Kim Cattrall opens the door. Oh. And Britney looks at Kim Cattrall, and she says, Hey, mama, it's me, Lucy. And Kim Cattrall just shuts the door. <laughs> <laughs> that was that it. was I all was they like, would pay her for that scene. <laughs> it got an eight-minute standing ovation at Cannes that year. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! People were like, "I do live for the Kim Cattrall uh, Sex in the City drama. I love God, all God everything. Just the uh, way she served in that limo at the end, and like, uh, got the money. The, you know, the check was so right. Yes." Yes, I was honey. Highly... That's what I want for Mean Girls too. I want to like not be in it and then just show up at the end and be like, I didn't even go here and then get it, like what everyone else got. Were you in the new one? No. You they weren't? They could have made me a janitor or something, right? That's right. I I thought you were a janitor for the no. longest time. No, they called and they were like, <laughs> expect a call and then didn't call. But that movie kind of bombed, right? I, look, I actually loved it because I love being the source material for a musical and every single cast member, it was lovely. I okay. loved meeting them. They were such cute kids. They were way smarter and advanced than we were when we were doing it. You know what I mean? Like, I, I enjoyed the experience, but I would have liked to be in it. It would have been nice to get residuals for something I'm the source material of that didn't never gave me the money I should have gotten. Do you know so what I mean? So who was in it? Did anybody come back? Um, Lindsay. But Lindsay's a producer, so they have to have her no matter what. It, who? what oh, she was like the, the principal or something? No, she was the, the host of the Mathlete competition. Cute. And then they had a bunch of cameos from the Broadway pe people. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Yeah, but like, you guys should have totally been in it. I agree. Like just to pop in, it like, would have just been nice, like you and and Janice at the like at a coffee shop talking yeah, no, or something in the no. background. I did get to go to the premiere. Oh. oh well, that's fun, right? Yeah, I had a great time. Honestly, I, it was really cool to see. I was smiling really hard, but yeah, it would have been nice. Hmm. Hmm. Well, next time, next yeah, uh, <laughs> in the next life. But for now, we have influencers, and they're spreading dangerous misinformation by saying sunscreen causes cancer, and people believe them. See. This is a segment that I like to call, <laughs> am I queuing on? <laughs> Everyone get your tinfoil hats out now. Um, a growing and influential... Do you believe this? 
No. Oh, okay. No, but I'm interested in reading it and getting your take on it. So a number of content creators are spreading misinformation that using sunscreen causes cancer and blocks the sun's benefits, despite years of scientific research proving that too much sun exposure leads to skin cancer. Skin cancer is also the most common form of cancer, with one in five Americans developing in, in their lifetime. Uh, excess exposure to UV radiation from sunlight or use of indoor tanning also increases the risk for all skin cancer types, as does a personal history of the disease. So in Influencers like Riley Check, who posts on X under the username at Holistic Grenade, problematic, <laughs> broadcast misleading statements like, quote, people who wear sunscreen are always getting skin cancer. That tweet that had nearly 60,000 views. And another content creator, Gubba Homestead. That's where I get all my medical information. I thought that was a character at Hogwarts. <laughs> um, shared a video of herself and red faced in the sunshine writing, I don't wear sunscreen and I never will. We blame the sun for cancer when we should be blaming our diets. Sunscreen and a poor diet will make you sick. Meanwhile, she like lives in like Vancouver. <laughs> well, also I'm like, maybe you're not supposed to drink the sunscreen. Yeah, I don't know. Um, so that video had 1.2 million views. So I don't know. Here's the thing about social media. Um, I don't know what to believe. Um, I feel like people are very entitled with like recipes mm. and food. And, well, I went like, to the hospital and almost died because I yeah. put a sugar compress on a hemorrhoid. Because you did that on I TikTok? Saw it on TikTok. You stop your face right now. I swear. So you... I, had, I had medicine, but I left it on set and I was filming and I was home and I'm like, I got to do something like, you know, to like soothe this. And I put a sugar compress and I ended up getting a toxic shock and went into hospital head up surgery. You dumb bitch. Now I've been a year bo <laughs> booze and a year sugar free. Wow. That's the whole reason? Yeah. It's crazy. So you had a hemorrhoid. <laughs> yeah. Do you have them now? No. Okay. I had had them in the past. It's a part of life. Yeah. I think that we don't talk enough about men's health, especially queer men's sexual health. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm happy to talk about it. I'm not embarrassed at all. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, I, yeah. I get So wait, so it was a hemorrhoid and what? It was just like... So it got like... Really, painful, really it painful. Was, and then it, it was turning into like an abscess. Oh, right? shit. And that makes you get a fever and all this other shit. And I was like, I've got to do something. But I was filming and I only had like two more days of filming. But then I had a weekend off. Mm -hmm. So I was like, let me do something. But I left all the medicine at set and I was like oh I gotta get something and I couldn't even like leave the house really it was very painful and I was like I don't know what I'm gonna do so I looked up on TikTok there's gotta be something uh, and this woman was like oh um, but the sugar compress it wasn't clear the information wasn't clear <laughs> and I ended up it got worse and I went to the I went to the clinic and they were like get your ass to the emergency room literally your ass no pun intended yeah and I went there and then in the emergency room it got really bad and I felt like I was gonna die and I almost did the doctor said if I waited two more days I, days, I would have died Crazy. If you waited two more days. So what did the sugar what is a sugar compress? Apparently they use it to like but you're only supposed to put it on for like 15 minutes, but I left I fell asleep and I left it on a long time and the sugar breeds bacteria. I ended up getting like an internal like what Madonna got, the internal like infection. Yeah. Bacterial infection. Yeah. It was horrible. You left your tampon in. I had a be yes, I did. <laughs> and I <laughs> and I had to be on like IV of all these antibiotics. Shit. What was crazy though is when I was in the hospital, I was like, by the way, your liver shot. And I'm, I was never a big drinker, you know. Yeah, me, yeah, I'm yeah, not. yeah. But the thing is, I didn't get drunk. I was having like five, six drinks, but I wasn't getting drunk. I would like have like a seltzer in between or something, you know. And man, I, out of all my friends, the one, the me being the one that has the liver issue was a crazy thing because all, I was like, if I'm sick, my friends are fucked. Like, yeah, this is crazy. Oh, I've been and a the, jar of pickles for years. And the, yeah, the doctor yeah. asked me, he was like, how many drinks do you have? Like, and I was like, eight. He goes, eight in a weekend? I was like, a night? Like, I yeah. was like, and I didn't say a night, but I was like, oh, I'm really in trouble. I got to just like. And, is that a lot? So let me tell you something. <laughs> According to a liver surgeon, it is. Let me tell you something that's so crazy, though. I had back pain for, like, five years. Uh -huh. I literally thought that I was handicapped the rest of my life. Like, I was in dancing. I'd walk a block and take a break. I was very quiet about it because I didn't want even work people, like, on sets to yeah. know what was wrong with me. Because, you know, people think you're hurt or you're sick. You don't work, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even, like, doing stand-up things, like, I would do, like, if I would, I, I could go through a whole hour, I guess, my adrenaline or whatever, when I would do my hour. And then I would go back stage and I'd be like, oh, my God, I have to wait for the inflammation to go down. Ever since I quit sugar, it's gone. Whoa. I'm like 10 years younger. Since, don't I look great? Maybe you need to make a TikTok about that. Yeah, maybe. And then and I'll get signed like, by UCI. I don't, like, I'm like, you know. <laughs> that's insane. It's really insane. I know. I know. So what have we learned? <laughs> don't listen to TikTok. I just did a Pride Preparation H ad, though. 
What is that, rainbow colored cream? Uh, huh? Yeah, whatever it is. I was like, <laughs> I'll take it. Let's go. Spread this. Just a rainbow. Spread the cream and the information. Wait, a pride. Little. Wait. It was like, take pride in your booty hole. <laughs> <laughs> the check cleared, Justin. The check cleared. The check <laughs> like, cleared. No, no I really, though, I really, I'm, I, you know, I'm a sexual health advocate. Yes. I'm, like, I'm, a, I'm an AIDS activist. Yes. I'm like, you know, I'm always talking about that kind of stuff. So it's right in brand for me. I'm just to proud talk of Preparation H to make a pride uh, cream. Yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, Preparation H. You can't spell hey girl without an H. Right, exactly. I don't know. I don't know. Cut that out. Yeah. <laughs> the other prep. <laughs> yeah, the other prep. Yeah. That's it. Preparation H, the other prep. So we have time for one more story. I'm glad I got the hemorrhoid in there under the wire. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the I don't like the term hemorrhoid and wire in the same <laughs> oh. sentence. It just sounds oh, yeah. painful. Um, but let's talk a little bit more about science, shall we? Shall we? If you love hemorrhoids, this pink blob with beady eyes is a humanoid <laughs> robot with living skin. So there's actually this is actually your hemorrhoid. Um, <laughs> we called the doctor up and he sent this to us. Um, so this is. The Stuff of Nightmares. This is a um, newly developed robot uh, that researchers are saying is living skin. So let me see if I can say this. Professor Shoji Takeuchi of the University of Tokyo developed this alien-like machine using engineered skin attached to a humanoid robot. So the scientists previously created a walking mini-robot using 3D-printed lab-grown meat I don't oh, like it. I am. Do I like don't it. like the term "lab grown meat." No, um, they're doing that too with like all kinds of chicken. And oh shit yeah, they all have like nine legs, like and they're like, "Kill us!" Um, this engine- is gonna be like CIA yep. masks. Yes, it's engineered skin and biological muscle tissue. He decided to continue to ve- develop the skin feature, which was grown in the uh, biohybrid systems laboratory at the university. So this is, um, yeah. I mean, innovation AI. for American girl dolls. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. No, look at this. Oh. You know what this reminds me of, though? And I don't know if you remember the movie Cocoon, but when they took off their skin, they looked like this. Do you remember? Like, they were like glowing aliens. I rem- remember Cocoon. I do not remember them taking their skin off. I do. Daily. <laughs> they looked like it's this. In Google, my can night- you Google <laughs> Cocoon Alien? <laughs> Oh my God, Night Terrors. Watch. There it is. The oh, first it picture. Does look like it. Isn't that terrifying? That's actually Trixie yeah. Mattel with no Maybe makeup. Maybe that's on. a headworm. Yeah, it's terrifying. Look at it. Oh my God. So that's where Hello. we are. Yeah. So this, I don't know. What are we going to see? I, I, I would assume, yeah, we're going to have like. Well, have American you seen girl some of the latex masks that people are putting over their whole entire face that look like so real? It's been re- my friend keeps sending them to me because they're more they're like hot girls and old men and they put oh the, like they, like the baby masks and all that kind of stuff. But they're like hyper realistic, and when you glue them to like parts of your face, like Katya Katya does that right? Like the old lady bit, mask, yeah, yeah, like yeah, it's kind of it's kind of getting really advanced. Like, like where you're just like, oh, is it real? Yeah, it, yeah it, some of them are really insane, and I'm like. I mean, the ability to be like a totally different person in public is appealing. I have to say, like, these, I, yeah, these guys—they're like crazy. Whoa. Some of them, yeah. That, um, is that Joe Rogan? <laughs> <laughs> That's insane. Yeah, like, but I mean, like, if we're one day we're gonna have, we've seen it in movies. Like, we see it in be sci-fi any films. Of these people at Disneyland, like, who cares? I kind of would like to do that. Where. You'd like pretend to be somebody else for the so entire day. So I went day. to Burning Man, like kind of like Tyra Banks when she was homeless for a day. I went to Burning Man and I had <laughs> I, I got a, a this page boy wig, okay, uh-huh. that was like black and orange, and then I had my friend who is like a famous hairstylist, like cut the hair to mm-hmm. me, like, so it was like rockery in my face, and I I felt like I could be whoever I wanted to be, like I was walking around like as me, you know what I mean, like doing whatever. I enjoyed it until I got into this like dome where we had a fight with like foam battles, and someone ripped my wig off. And then it, that's then homophobic. It's homophobic. But um, other than that, I felt I think it was kind of cool. I like the idea of like cosplay and being somebody else for a little bit. I mean, that's why I'm an actor. I like the idea of it. But this, 
Living skin. Living skin. Creep testing. I don't. I. I want my skin to, like. I like the idea of like like a burn victim or like somebody who's like had a horrible sure, accident. Exactly. We like we grow it on and all that kind of somebody stuff. Somebody with like a like a facial paralysis being able to like have expression yeah, again, like a cleft there's, lip. Or there's something. tons of like 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 things for that. But for what they're going to use this for, you know, this world's evil. This is going to be like something way worse. It's going to get dark. It's going to be like now your sex dolls have human flesh on it. Do you know what I mean? Like it's going to be like <sighs> oh I know. It's going to be it's going to give Westworld. We're going to have like. Robot Russies. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Like I do like the idea of like robot prostitution though. What? Like Westworld? No, yeah, like AI, the movie AI. Uh-huh. Like where, you know, um, Oh, but it was like that was Jude Law yeah, robot. Yeah. And he could be like, I'm blonde. I'm this. I yeah. you know, I want one of those robots. That'd be great. Just a robot prostitute? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to deal with like an actual person. That's like excellent. You don't have to pay them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe, you know, maybe there's a subscription model. <laughs> oh, I don't know. The whole, like, I, I you know what? See, it's like serious S&M or something like <laughs> that. Good for, like, uh, oh, wait, wait. This, we, we have Lee's highlighting something. Creating robots that can heal themselves, sense their environment more accurately, and perform tasks with human-like dexterity is incredibly motivating. Is it? I don't want a robot being able to heal itself. I. You know what? When I throw my Alexa across the room, I don't want it to say, ouch. <laughs> yeah, I know. We don't need sense in it. Yeah. I don't want it to know. When I'm like, Alexa, I said chapel like, Also, have you seen that little black bob ro blob robot? It's like a magnetic blob. And it's they call it a robot because it's man-made and it's artificial materials. But it's this little black bo blob. And they can manipulate it with magnet technology. And they, the idea oh, yeah, is this it? Yeah, the idea is that this will um, be able to be swallowed, and then be able to go down and repair things inside of you without surgery, and be able to come back up. It's kind of intriguing, I think. I this is, hate so, this. <laughs> this is magnetic slime. See, look at where it could travel. Like they could have it do things like in your body, and um, yeah, look, it's able to grab onto that. So like it could actually like retrieve a bullet from you or like uh, repair things. So this is like you can cut it; it forms back together. I think this is really. I've been like following the process of this. This is one of the things I'm intrigued by. Just don't put a uh, sugar thing on it. Years ago, Ugh. I said to myself, "What is going to bother me?" Like you know, grandparents, the, like the universal grandparent, like have always been like, "Oh, we can clean out a liver, perfect." <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> I'd be like, um, oh, these kids today with their hair and their clothes yeah. and all the, you're wearing ribbed jeans, like yeah. all that whole thing, right? I was like, what's going to piss me off? Like, what would be the thing where I would draw the line? And I thought about this when I was 17. Okay. I was like, what's going to be the thing, you know, and here we are like years and years later. And I'm like, and it was uh, fake piss stained jeans and like fake pit stained. And now they're here. Oh, yeah, this yeah, yeah. We've talked about them on the show. Exactly. The so fake this is, piss jeans. So I knew that when that, I, like when I was 17 years old, years ago, I was like, that it would be the, where I draw the line. And it's here. Yeah. So like whatever it is, what do you think would be a thing for you that's going to make you like say, I'm done when it comes to like fashion, like where you're just like, I can't like, you know, it's oh, like mine. straight men wearing pasties. <laughs> like what? what's the thing where it's just like the end of the line? Like, I mean, I think it is, it is kind of crazy because I feel like, especially like in fashion it started out with like the under boob and now it's just uh. kind of like what's the point of clothes i feel like if i see like a grown man like like i feel like young people can get away with it because they're young and they're experimenting and figuring out like who they are as as grown ups but i'm saying like if there's just like like just crotchless shorts but but like like a middle-aged guy in florida is wearing it yeah. i'll be like and i'm good <laughs> yeah i don't need some, some guy named it. larry being like well this is what the kids are doing you know i'll be I like know. okay or like you know um we're really i mean this isn't a gender thing but just we're really close to like male bras do you know what i mean like kind of like they did on seinfeld like they had the bro oh yeah yeah i feel like that's like coming like I, these i would these definitely are I, like I, I just don't think i could ever no I yeah. would definitely not do a bra. I would definitely... You know what? I actually had this conversation at the beach the other day when I was swimming in sewage. I was looking around and I was like, wow, there is a lot of thongs. A you lot. Were like, you were lagooning for thongs? I was lagooning for thongs, <laughs> yes. I honestly was... Um, 
I mean, I'm from South Florida. I've seen cheeks. Yeah, all, I, I, I like I, when men are cheeked up. Get, I'm all about it. Well, I was kind of like, I, I was like, wow, these these are like, like thongs. Like, what is even the point? Like, the, these ass cheeks are just like, <laughs> like just eating the floss. Yeah, I was like, what is? What's even the point? There's a gay beach in Fort Lauderdale called Sebastian Beach, mm-hmm. and when my he's passed now, but my elderly uncle, when he was like in his 80s, my elderly gay uncle, mm-hmm. his friends were like in their 60s, and they would wheel him there in the wheelchair just to go look at all the men in the thongs. I was like, I want friends like that. I want to sit and just look at cheeks all day. When I'm I 80. wish I could. Like, I love a good like like speedo like. Kind of like a vintage brief look, like mm. from like the fifties. Cut and, oh god, mesh! It's gonna happen. It already had the old sixties, like mesh. No, like mesh, shoots. mesh speedos. They they were from like the sixties back in the day. That was a thing. Oh really? Yeah, like in all those like physique magazines. Yeah, oh, mm, yeah, 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 yeah. Like yeah. the old, the old wink, wink. Yeah, nudge, yeah. Nudge, say no more about that. But I was like, wow, there's a lot. I would never. I could never. I don't have the confidence to, to sure, wear a no. thong. Yeah, maybe one day, but it's not gonna happen. Mm. But. Um, Maybe Wednesday when we're all by the beach together, Mr. We'll Martin's just wear there. our thongs and talk to spirits. <laughs> um, well, Danny, thank you so much for being oh, here. It was a pleasure. Did you have fun? I did. Good, I had so good. much fun. I've been waiting to have fun with you, so yes, it was yes, really yes. nice yes. to have me. Thank and, you. Of course, anytime. And please tell everybody what you got coming up, what you're working on, all uh, the stuff where they can find you. Yeah, you can find me at What's Up Danny pretty much on every social media platform from Snapchat to whatever. Yes. Like, I'm there. Yes. What's Up Danny. Um, And uh, I have music coming out soon. What? Yeah, I've been working on music for like a year and uh putting out some some music real serious stuff not like you know comedy stuff so that's like exciting what, what kind of music is it it's kind of like a country yacht rock soul kind of vibe like real adult contemporary i'm not trying to reinvent the wheel i'm not trying to reinvent can i drink wine to it you absolutely can <laughs> to me like every time we've been working on all the music all i keep thinking about is like this has to work on a beach a pool yeah. like a pontoon boat like yeah. a raft chill like, vibes chill something. vibes it's very vibey that's yeah. great so it's excellent and then um uh just doing stand-up Hawking jokes for chicken wings all over the nation. Isn't it great? Yeah. It's good times. Well, uh, you guys, make sure to follow Danny. Um, you can always come back and you can sit with us. <laughs> um, you can catch me in San Diego at the Mic Drop on July 11th. I will be there. So please get your tickets. Go to Mic Drop Comedy and I'll see you on the 11th. I also have some dates coming up. Go to my Instagram link tree. We've got Fort Worth. We've got Seattle. Irvine Improv. Get those tickets while you can. And as always, we will see you here again next time on the Just Saying Podcast. Take care. We'll see you later. Happy 4th of July. Bye. Take care of your hemorrhoids.